Alan here at Urban Arcade, and if you've watched my videos before or you've been subscribed to me for a while, you would have noticed that I'm a massive Tomb Raider fan. Seriously, I bum the shit out of this franchise. The collection just never stops growing, and I play them all the time. It's the only franchise I really follow. Oh, and yeah, I love Lara Croft. A lot! Now, I'm also a massive horror movie and game fan. I love Halloween as well. Everything happens to be orange that time of year. I love the sweets. I love pumpkins. I even love it that you can't see nothing and slip on your ass on Halloween. Now, there's this website called TombRaiderLevelEditor.net. Now, you can download these mini games or custom levels that people have created. Yeah, they have created their own original levels that are literally plug and play. You download them and play them instantly. You create them with a level editor, which I'm shit at as well. I've played a lot of these custom levels and a lot of them are really good. One I noticed recently in the Hall of Fame is I Know What You Did Last Summer. Yeah, there's a Hall of Fame where the best levels are put on. And all I can say is it is terrifying. It really creeped me out. It's based on the movie of the same name. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. I Know What You Did Last Summer. I still know what you did last summer and I always fucking know what you did last summer. Now it has this mini intro at the beginning where it goes and pans down to the water. You see everyone standing above where they've just dumped the body. And then you see the body underwater just standing there. And it, it looks quite amusing but it's got this creepy atmosphere to it. Straight away just the menu, the music. And this looks quite creepy too. It's a corpse. You know just underwater with bubbles coming out of his mouth. At first glance to be honest I didn't think it would be any good. So you know I hit new game. Awoke in a movie theatre. A cinema. And I thought, okay, what's this about? It's a bit of a weird one. The music and atmosphere straight away creeped me out. It was empty. And you know that's not good when you wake up in an empty cinema. So then when you finally get out of the cinema booth and start walking around, you'll notice a lot of posters, mainly at the I Know What You Did Last Summer one. So you're actually in a movie theatre and they've added posters there. A nice touch, but it's got that creepy vibe about it. I mean, have you ever been somewhere when it's closed before or when it's just about to close and there's no one around? It doesn't make sense to you. It's really creepy that way. And they even have a Tomb Raider poster in there. I like that. Good eye for detail, guys. After a while you start to explore, you'll notice a little cutscene where the security guard is getting chased by the killer. Yes, that dude with the hook. Not Candyman. This dude, he's like a fisherman. He's wearing like a long black coat. I think it's yellow in the movie. I'm not too sure. It's a long time ago when I did actually see it. And he's chasing after him. The dude's out of there, and I'm getting even more scared now. The music's pumping, and I don't know what's going to happen next. Now, this controls and plays like a Tomb Raider, but reminds me heavily of a survival horror, like Silent Hill or Resident Evil. It's got it, and there's a lot of references and sound effects from Silent Hill as well, and Resident Evil. I mean, who would have thought that, making a Tomb Raider game that's scary? I mean, I found Tomb Raider scary to begin with, but this is a bit much. And the killer kills that security guard, then you give chase. Well, you sort of give chase. Well, I doubt you'd want to particularly chase after the killer. Maybe if he had a handgun, you do get a handgun. But this isn't your typical Tomb Raider, shooting two handguns at something or a shotgun. You literally walk around as if it's a survival horror, picking up clues, finding notes. Did I mention you can plug your controller in and configure the buttons and play the game using a controller? just like you did on the PlayStation. I'm not a PC gamer, so I'm not going to be using a keyboard playing this, so I felt right at home. And after knowing there's a serial killer with a hook that's looking to hang you up running about this cinema, I was nervous. The music doesn't help, and looking outside to see him park cars and no one around, it could be stroke midnight and there's nothing. Everyone's gone home, everyone's asleep, you're stuck in an empty cinema by yourself. I need a nappy change. Oh look, the door from Resident Evil 2. No joke, it's the actual door. And I didn't want to walk through any doors at this point as well. I was scared of what was behind it. And now this wouldn't really be a Tomb Raider based game without any puzzle solving now would it? I spent the best part of 40 minutes trying to figure out what it is I had to do here. But I liked it. I like a bit of puzzle solving every now and again, especially if it is a Tomb Raider based game. You're going to need it. And what you do is you solve this so you end up getting a battery that you need to use to get the toilet doors working. I guess they're electronic toilet doors, like most places nowadays. 
So you go in the toilet looking for manly love and then you run in there thinking, what the hell am I doing in the toilet? To your first meeting with the killer. Seriously, the music really blares out here and it's the same music from the film as well. And I thought, where is he? Oh my God, where is he? I was actually terrified. I couldn't believe it. I'm terrified on a Tomb Raider game, a custom level game. It actually made me scared. I was thinking, right, what do I do now? What's this? What have I picked up? A note? What's a note for? I'll get my gun out. Come on, have some of this. You got a hook. Mate, I've got a gun. What was the cutscene about? Where is he? Where is he hiding? Is he in the boy's side or the girl's side? Where is he? What's that sound? I can hear footsteps. I walk along to find him coming out of one of the cubicles and my gun jams. What the hell? She actually says, oh, my gun is jammed. I didn't know what to do. I kept thinking, is it something I've done? If I keep pressing it, will it shoot? Kill this fucker. You manage to outrun him, climb a ladder, and then you get away. You go for a shaft and he's gone. Thank God for that. It was very scary coming across him because I didn't know what I could do. I couldn't fight him. I might as well have just died there and then. Obviously, the people that made this are experienced speedrunners or Tomb Raider fans. I mean, this was the hardest series of jumps I've ever done on a Tomb Raider game. Yeah, it looks like I'm all great and done it really well here, but you didn't see how many attempts this actually took me. And if you don't do it before the music stops, you fucked up. Restart and try again. But it was good. It was fun. It made my heart race. Not only that, but knowing the killers around, I expected him to pop out of any corner. I wanted to play it safe, but I didn't have a gun to do anything with, so I was really worried. You then get to the cinema projection room, and I thought, that's kind of eerie, I was only there a few minutes ago. You find some film, play some clips from, <laughs> it looks like an animated gift from the movie, and then you pass out. Now, I'm not too sure why that is, does she die in the film like that? Again, I have to watch the film again, it's been a long time. After you do pass out, you find out that that was the end of this part. So I was thinking, what's going to happen next? Is this the game over? A quick loading screen, then you're another character waking up in a bed. Now, I'm not sure if that was a dream and you're waking up as a different person or it's the same character. I'm not too sure. But waking up in a house and I don't know where I am. Again, something quite eerie. You then explore the house, run downstairs to the living room to see all of your friends. And there's a little cinematic part where they're actually all talking again it's an audio file taken directly from the film of talking about what happened what they have done i haven't actually completed this game yet now it is quite small from what i believe but i don't want to go any further on the video because i want you to experience it seriously go on the site download it and play it you don't have to install it you can delete it afterwards if you want and again, like I said, you can get a controller off eBay for about a pound. Come on, two pound. And then you can plug it in, configure the controls. It's very easy to do because it's actually on the program itself. When you go into it, you can configure it in the options to how it played on the PlayStation. That's perfect. And it's a good original story. I loved it. Now, I have the PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4. I've got loads of games. I've got a new 3DS. But I find myself coming back to play this because it's something different. Something I wish I could have experienced back then. And it makes me want to make my own. I may have to dabble in this again and see if I can get good at using this editor. I mean, these people make works of art. They even make remakes of the first game. So it's sort of like a Halloween special. It's not a random stories or anything like that. It's just a really good experience that I had that I wanted to share with you. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a go. Let me know what you think. Happy Halloween. And I hope to make more videos. And I'll see you soon. Alan at Urban Arcade. See you later.